Hello Orns, and welcome to Baldur's Foodie Gate, the premier tavern in Baldur's Gate as far as you know. What can I do for you and your interesting looking friends? Mm, sure, we've got a couple of rooms available if you don't mind squeezing in together. 100 gold per room. We've even got some food left. Some of it might even be edible. How about a couple of very lovely carrots? Oh, you're one of them food koino sewers I've heard so much about. Well, how about a few very fine potatoes for a very fine uh, gentleman such as yourself? Uh, not quite enough for one each, but I'm sure you'll make do. Maybe I do, but not for the likes of you. But I'm a very fair and reasonable and upstanding businessman. I can sort you out with uh, this lovely bunch of bananas for a very reasonable price of 25 gold. Not going to get any better offers here, mate. Whoa, 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 all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, for, for ball your hands sake, all right, okay. Jeez, you're a touchy one, aren't you? I've got some rofe ribs out the back. Look, look, I'll, I'll grill them up for you. Just, just keep your flames for yourself, all right? Just keep it to yourself. What? <sighs> Fine, all right. I was gonna have those rofe ribs for me dinner as well. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Big Foodie Geek. I hope you are well. First of all, if you're a subscriber or you're checking on the videos regularly, uh, apologies for not having put up a video for several weeks. It kind of wasn't planned, but I decided I needed a little bit of a break from filming and making videos because one, you know, things are expensive at the moment, making videos is expensive, and things were getting a bit tight with money. Also, I've been trying to take better care of my physical and mental health, and honestly, taking a break from filming and without having to worry about trying to create videos and stuff like that was just beneficial for that as well, because as much as I do love making videos, they can be a bit stressful, you know, coming up with ideas, and when my physical health and my mental health is bad, you know, it's not always the easiest thing to do. So hence the rather extended break. But I'm hoping this will be the first of more videos and hopefully keeping things regular again. But we'll just see how it goes. I'm just trying to do this as and when I can, because this is not my living. I wish it was, but it's not. So I'm very busy with work as well, and I'll have to work around that as well. So we'll see how things go. But enough preamble, as you can probably tell from the intro to this video, which I had a little bit of fun filming, hopefully you enjoyed as well. It is time for another Big Foodie Gamer video. It has been several months since I last did one, and I promised I'd do them a bit more regularly, so it is definitely time for another, especially as I have been playing a heck of a lot of Baldur's Gate while I've been off. Well, hello. What can I do for you? Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Fine. I will assign flesh to aid you on your way. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, so between work and everything else, I've been pretty much just playing Baldur's Gate 3 because it is amazing. It is so, so good. And if you are a gamer and you haven't heard of Baldur's Gate 3, then where the hell have you been? It is fantastic. It is probably one of the best role-playing games I've ever played on any console or PC. It is absolutely brilliant. And if you're not a gamer or anything like that and you're wondering what Baldur's Gate 3 is, well, it's a video game set around Dungeons and Dragons. So if you've probably heard of Dungeons and Dragons, if you've ever watched anything like Stranger Things or anything like that, it's gone from kind of being like something that only nerds do, you know, stereotyping, to something that's become increasingly popular, which has been popularized by, you know, 
people playing it on YouTube, you've got Critical Role, you've got the Elks Venture guys, you've got High Rollers. It is very, very popular, more popular than it's ever been. And in fact, I played my very first game of D&D only a few weeks ago and I absolutely bloody loved it. So this seems like a good time to do a big foodie gamer video based around Baldur's Gate 3. So these big foodie gamer videos are basically me taking a food or a recipe from a video game and trying to recreate it in real life, IRL. So that's what I'm doing today with Baldur's Gate 3 and I am going to try and recreate grilled rothe ribs. Now if you're wondering what grilled rothe ribs, well here they are. The description in game says, doused in herbs and honey, these ribs are a popular fare during midsummer festivals. Well, it's not midsummer here anymore, but I'm still going to make them anyway. And in case you're wondering what a rothe ribs, well, here's a rothe. <laughs> they are basically big oxen-like creatures and they are also surprisingly loyal. Waiting for master, miss his scratches. Can't leave without him. So those are what I'm going to try and recreate today. There were other things in Baldur's Gate 3 that I could try to recreate, but those seem like the most interesting, like they would be the most tasty. And also it seems preferable to making those over like grilled dwarf ribs. But because this is a fictional dish, I thought I would try and mix things up a bit. And rather than just trying to get some ribs from say like beef or pork or something like that, I would try, <laughs> try being the operative word, and create my own grilled rothe ribs from various different cuts of meat, basically, and, and try and shape it into grilled rothe ribs and take it from there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna go either, but it makes for a more interesting video than me just, like I say, grabbing some ribs, slathering them in honey and herbs and, and, and cooking them. Well, how are you gonna make these grilled rothe ribs, Matthew? I hear you ask. Well, I'm glad you did ask, so I'm going to do it this way. So I've got a few different types of meat here. I have got some very nice steak mince, which I got from the butchers over the road. I've got some pork ribs here, because if you look at what's in Baldur's Gate 3, there are ribs sticking out the side. So I'm gonna take the meat off of these and then actually blanch the bones so they're actually clean and then put the ribs back into the meat once I've put it all together. So we've got the ribs sticking out so I can actually use the meat from this and then use the bones again. Then I thought I needed something else to kind of mix up the flavor a bit because obviously this is a fictional beast and while it might just taste like beef or pork or something like that, I thought, you yeah, know, that's a bit too easy. So I've got myself some venison steaks as well because I thought it, they might have a bit of a gamey flavor. So I thought I'd use some venison steaks as well. So these are gonna go into my meat and try and add a bit of gamey flavor to everything else. So we're gonna use that as well. But that's not all because I have to obviously try and bring all of this meat together and make sure it all stays together. And that's probably gonna be the trickiest part. So what I'm gonna to have to do is basically bind it together. And to do that, I'm going to use meat glue. <laughs> yeah, meat glue, I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, so this is essentially a powder that you can put onto meat and help bind it together, bring all those proteins together so it's actually like firmer and things like that. It is an interesting looking thing. I have seen it used on videos before. I've never actually used it myself. So I'll be using this stuff to bring it all together, but then obviously I'm gonna cook it all as well. And because obviously this is gonna be grilled rothe ribs and in Baldur's Gate 3, these are likely gonna be cooked over an open fire. I can't do that here because I don't have anything to cook over an open fire or an open flame with, so I'm going to have to improvise a bit. And for that, I'm going to be using my indoor smoker. So I've used this on a couple of videos before. It's a great bit of kit, it allows you to get real smoky flavor into your meat without having to use a, a grill or a barbecue or anything like that. And I can use this to try and just get some of that wood smoked flavor that you would get from cooking over an open fire. And once it's done in here, I will get some herbs and honey over it and then I will just try and finish it off by searing it and then we will give it a go. Whether it works though is another matter. So join me on this quest and see whether I can actually create some grilled rothe ribs from scratch. So the first thing I wanna do is get the meat off of these pork ribs because like I said, I'm gonna get the meat off of these, use the meat within the grilled rothe ribs and then I'm gonna blanch these bones to get off any of the excess meat and hopefully clean off the bones and then reuse them within my grilled rothe ribs. That's gonna basically be me trying to trim these as close to the bone as I possibly can.
So there's one done. I'm probably gonna struggle to get too much more meat off of there. And this is where it going into basically some simmering water for probably a good few hours while the meat is basically resting up in the fridge to hopefully get off the rest of that meat, clean off the bones and just making sure I can use these again without giving myself food poisoning. So I'm just gonna repeat this process for all the ribs. You don't need to watch me do all of these because it's gonna take a while. So you can just come back when I'm done with all of these. See you in a bit. Okay, sometime later, this is the meat off my pork ribs and this is gonna go into the mix for my grilled rofe ribs. I'm going to need to do something else with this first, but also let me quickly show you over here. Come with me. So I've got a big pot in here now and I have put the bones from the pork ribs into here. I'm going to turn this into a bone broth, which I can then use later in the week, maybe for some ramen or something like that but it will also clean off those bones and just get those bones clean so I can use them as part of the grilled rofe ribs. So I'm not wasting these bones at all. I'm gonna use the bones, any meat on them and turn them into a bone broth. As for this, I don't want it to be chunky so I'm gonna blitz it up in a food processor. So I'm just gonna pop this meat into my food processor, get the lid on and then I'm just gonna blitz that up. There we go, that's more like it. That's almost like a mint, but obviously it's not a mint. I don't have a mincer. So this was the next best thing. So this is going to go in with the rest of the stuff that is actually mint. So this will combine in nicely. Quickly back over to them bones. You can see the water is now clear because I've changed it. And we've also got some onions, leeks and carrots in there. So that will create a nice bone broth from those bones and also get that meat off those bones. Remember, no wastage. Now back over to our meat. I put the pork meat from those ribs into a bowl. There's 440 grams worth of meat there. I need to weigh this out because how much meat there is depends on how much of the meat glue I'm gonna use. So for every kilo, I need to use 15 grams of this stuff. I'm actually increasing the amount of mints I'm gonna use as well. So I've got actually a pack of mints here from the supermarket as well to bulk out what I got from the butchers just because I felt like I needed more. So we've got some pork mints from the supermarket there. Then also the steak mints from the butcher over here. And we're also popping in our venison steaks, or rather venison grill steaks. So these are created specifically for things like you know, barbecues, using as burgers or something like that. So these are going in. They've actually already got some pork in them as well. So I've got that sort of combination going on already. So these go in as well. And that gives me about 1.8 kilos worth of meat. So I'm probably going to need just under 30 grams worth of the meat glue to bring this all together. But before I go in with the meat glue, I'm just going to get some gloves on for starters because I've heard that it's best to use gloves when you're using the meat glue. But I'm also just going to bring this together some before adding the meat glue. Right, with that combined together, let's get over the meat glue. I think with it just being almost two kilos, I think it'll be safe to use about 30 grams worth of the meat glue. I'm just going to sprinkle this over. So you can see that is just a powder, but that is supposed to bring together all the different proteins of these meats and hopefully combine it into one almost. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and get in here with my hands. Right, hopefully that's all worked through enough to do its magic. So I'm gonna take my gloves off and change them because I wanna not be handling stuff with meaty gloves. And, I'm, and then I'm gonna get some foil and some parchment paper to wrap this all up so it's nice and tight and hopefully go into the shape that I want it to be. Right, here's my parchment paper and my foil. So I'm just gonna get this meat onto it and try and kind of get this shaped into the rotary rib shape that we saw in the graphic. So I think that's roughly the right sort of shape. So what I wanna do now is kind of get this folded over, this folded over like a nice parcel, nice meaty package. Um, or other phrasing, really just kind of get this up, rolled over, nice and tight, and then wrap it even tighter in this foil. Right, now that's going to go into the fridge and rest for about four hours, and hopefully that meat glue will do its thing and bring it all together into hopefully one mass of meat. I don't know. I've never used meat glue before. I don't know how good it is at bringing together like different kinds of meat and mints like that. But we'll give it a go. We'll see how it turns out. This is an experiment. 
So I'm hoping this is firm enough to bring it all together. So into the fridge, this goes for four hours. And in that time also, hopefully my bones will clear off from the ribs that I can use then to put back into these to create the look and feel of the grilled rote ribs. So I'll see you in about four hours and you'll see me in about a few seconds because I'm gonna cut jump this so you don't have to wait around. <laughs> you know, I completely forgot I had this scar makeup stuff on. Um, it's just as well nobody like rang the doorbell or anything and I answered it because they'd be like, what the f Anyway, it's been four hours. It's now like five o'clock. No, it's 25 past five. So it's been a good four hours since I put in the meat into the fridge. So it's time to get out and to see whether it's actually come together into like one big mass of meat. I'm really interested to see how it's come out. Even if it's not, we'll press on ahead anyway, but let's see how this meat glue has come together, quite literally. There it is, let's grab it out. And we'll get this unwrapped and see how that's turned out. So this is the moment of truth. Unwrapping this, seeing if it's actually kind of come together enough for me to cook it solidly. You know what? That doesn't seem bad at all. You see, that's quite, it's quite dense. It does feel like a solid mass of meat. That is pretty good. That has come together quite well. That might work, you know? That just might work. But it's not ready yet because obviously it hasn't got any ribs in it. It's not grilled rothe ribs without any ribs in it. So that's what I was obviously doing earlier when I was boiling up those ribs, trying to get the meat off of them, and also creating a bone broth at the same time, which will be used another time. But here I have got some ribs, bones from the ribs, which are now clean from having been boiling away. So I can now put these into here, hopefully, and use these as the ribs for the grilled rothe ribs. See how many I'll need. I reckon probably like one, two. Let's, just, let's see how we get on. Let's pop some in here. It's quite tough to get in there actually. There we go, there's one. There's two. There we go. That is now our grilled rothe rib meat complete with ribs. That looks all right. That does look all right. But obviously it needs cooking. So let's crack on with that because that's going to take at least an hour. And I would like to try and finish this this evening. So let's crack on. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to do a quick mix of some herbs because it said grilled rothe ribs are doused in honey and herbs. So we need a herb mix. I'm going to use some dried herbs. We'll do a rough mix of some dried oregano, some dried tarragon. And because it's mostly beef, I'm going to go with some really nice dried rosemary because that goes fantastically with beef. I'm also going to go with a bit of thyme as well, but I'm also going to go in with some mustard powder. You might argue it's not a herb, but it is kind of a spice. And it goes very nicely with honey, which is what's going to go over our meat. And lastly, some salt and some ground black pepper. And then that's going to be our mix. So I'm just going to get in with my hands, just bring that all together. And then with our meat back, I'm going to throw it everywhere. So we're saying with our meat back, I'm going to just get this over our meat. Gonna rub it in and turn it over and get it on the other side. There you go, that's looking pretty good. That is nicely coated in the herbs. So that is now ready to go into the smoker. So over here we have our electric smoker. If you've not seen me use this before, it's quite simple. You put some wood chips into here and then you place in the meat and it will smoke it for the desired amount of time that you give it. So I'm gonna get some wood chips into the chip cup here. Chip cup, smoking cup, it's called a smoking cup. Right, that's nicely filled with wood chips. I'm actually using cherry wood chips here because it's a nice subtle flavor. So it's not gonna hopefully overpower the meat. On with the lid and then on with the stand as well. Let's place on our grilled rothe ribs. Hopefully that'll just fit. That does just fit. Well done me, I did not <laughs> measure that at all so that's quite lucky and I'm actually just gonna hot smoke this today because I don't want to infuse it with too much smoky flavor and also I don't have a lot of time to be able to do this seeing as it is getting later into the evening so hot smoke it is today we'll give it an hour and see how we get on right let's get this switched on as I said we're gonna hot smoke it for about an hour it's gonna be an hour minimum so if it's not enough after an hour, if it looks like it's gonna need longer, then I will give it longer. Because the last thing I wanna do is undercook the meat and give myself food poisoning. So one hour hot smoke, let's see how we get on. 
So it's been barely a minute, but you can see there's already a lot of smoke going on in this. And that's really why I like this thing. You get that smoking experience at home, but if you don't have a fancy smoker or the space outside or anything like that, you can get one of these and get that smoking experience at home. Won't be the same as using a nice outdoor smoker or anything like that, but it gets you close. It's somewhere to start. Right, it's been an hour, so it's time to see whether our grilled rofe ribs have had enough time to get some nice smoky flavour in and see whether they are at a good temperature or whether they need a bit longer. So let's have a look and then we can... Oh, look at that. Look at those. You've got all that smoky flavour coming from there. You've got the herbs as well. It smells fantastic. But obviously, I need to check whether internally whether this is close to being done or whether it needs longer. So let's go in about here. Yeah, that is not done. That is a good way off. So that's gonna need a good while longer. So that's definitely gonna need longer, but because I don't wanna overpower this with smoke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this into the oven instead. I'm gonna go get it wrapped up in foil, and let it finish off in the oven. So I'm going to try and carefully, without burning myself, lift this out of here. That is still feeling pretty solid, that's good move that into here. Right, with that wrapped up in foil, I'm gonna put it into the oven at 200 degrees C and basically cook it until it is at a safe temperature. So we will come back when that is done and we can move on to the final stage. Right, my rofe ribs have had another hour in the oven and they are definitely cooked through. I've checked whether the thermometer is a safe internal temperature. The juices are running out clear from this now. So I think this is almost there. All it needs now is some honey to glaze it with, because that is the final thing. So I'm gonna get this out of the tin, get rid of these juices, and then I'm gonna cover it with some honey, and I'll give it the finishing touch. I'm going over with some honey here, give it a nice glaze. There we go, that's got a nice looking shine on it, but I just wanna give it a quick little bit of caramelization on that honey, but I don't wanna put it back in the oven again. So how are you gonna do that without putting it back in the oven? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to cast my own little fireball spell on this. And how are you going to do that? I hear you ask as well. Well, I'm glad you're asking all these important questions. Let me show you. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you fire. I'll take you to yes, I picked up this little baby not too long ago because I really wanted to get something like this to try out on various different things. And I thought this is a really good one to try out for the first time just to get that honey glaze a little bit caramelized without having to put it back in the oven. Won't need too long, just gonna blast it with a little bit of this insane power that you get from this. So let's give that a quick blast of this fireball and then we can give it a go and see how it tastes. Let's be trying to be as careful as possible here. There we go, that was fun. But remember, this is not a toy. Be careful if you get one of these. And that's it. Those are grilled rofe ribs, all done and ready to try. There we go, look at those. I'm actually really, really pleased with how those have turned out. <laughs> that is a weird experiment, but it looks the part. It definitely looks the part, I think, compared to what you see in the game and all the graphics and stuff like that. That looks the part, I think. But how's it going to taste? Because obviously I've cobbled this together from like pork ribs and venison grill steaks and beef mince and then smoked it and then just done all these crazy things. But how's it going to come out? Is it going to come out well? Is it going to taste nice? Who knows? But let's find out right now. So honestly, I do not know how this is going to come out. It's definitely not going to slice like any traditional ribs or anything like that. This is purely for the aesthetic. So I'm just going to cut a couple of slices off of it here. We'll see how it turns out. I'll tell you what, that has held its shape really well. I wasn't expecting it to be like, you know, a cut of meat or anything like that, because obviously this is all just minced meat together, but that has sliced off really, really well. I wonder if I can just cut another one. There we go, look at that. That has held together. I'd say I'm almost speechless. I'm rarely speechless because you've probably heard me if you've been on here before. I talk a lot. That has come out really well. That has turned out really well. At least appearance wise, that has held together. Thank you, meat glue. But how's it gonna taste? That's the main thing. I wanna know how it's gonna taste. Right, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's give this a taste. I'm not expecting great things because it was a bit of an experiment. I kind of cobbled it together with different meats and yeah, using meat glue and stuff like that. So I'm not expecting fantastic texture, but as long as the flavor's good, then that's the main thing. Cheers, let's try some grilled rofe ribs. Hmm. 
that is actually pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Is it a little on the dry side? Yes, it is. It is a little bit on the dry side, but the smoky flavor, the honey, the herbs, and the general meatiness of it, it's actually really nice. It's actually really nice. I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. It's kind of got like a sausage meaty texture, which I don't hate. That is not bad at all. That is not bad at all considering what I did to this. This is probably a bit of a Frankenstein's monster, quite almost literally in terms of concept, but it's quite good. It's quite good for what it is. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's it, that's it for this episode of Big Foodie Gamer where I have recreated grilled rothe ribs from Baldur's Gate 3. How do you think I did? Do you think I did them justice? It's a fictional dish so there's no real measure or yardstick for it. But how do you think I got on? Do you think that looked the part? That's the main thing I wanted to look the part and the fact that it also tasted all right is a bonus really. So I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. But let me know how you think I did. And as well as making that, I also finished Baldur's Gate 3 today. So I say that's a pretty good day all round. I would say that's a critical success, not a critical fail. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see me make any other foods from any other video games, do let me know. Let me have some ideas. I'm always open to suggestions. And it's pretty good to be back filming videos. It did have a bit of an extended break there, but hopefully I'll be back a little bit more regularly. It's just tough trying to balance this and life and everything else. But hopefully I'll be back a little bit more regularly. Anyway, I'm going to head off because it's been a long day filming this video. This took a lot of time and effort, but I am pleased with the result. But if you are pleased with this video, if you enjoyed it as well, then obviously like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to find out when new videos go up. And I will see you next time on Big Foodie Geek. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye. And if you're wondering what a rothe ribs, <laughs> well, if you're wondering what a rothe ribs, and if you're wondering what a rothe, and in case you're wondering what a rothe ribs,